Welcome to the No Sugar Coating Podcast. I am Amber Romaniak, emotional eating, digestive, and hormone expert. I am also the founder of amberapproved.ca. I support professional women achieve optimal health through mindful eating, self-care, and overcoming self-sabotage with food. This podcast provides the honest truth on what you really need to create body freedom. The No Sugar Coating Podcast provides information on healthy living, lifestyle changes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. Always seek the advice of your healthcare practitioner regarding your health and nutrition program. Welcome, my friends, to the No Sugar Coating Podcast. I am really, really, really excited for today's episode. And right before I dive into that, I also want to welcome the male listeners to the podcast, as I know I've had more men checking out the podcast and reaching out for support. So welcome all. I know I touch more on women, um, but I also always mean if I just say her or, you know, she um, always I mean him and he as well and or you know I really know and respect that a lot of men struggle with eating disorders and body image issues and and weight and these these different things as well and this is just truly a safe space for anyone to come and listen no matter your gender so welcome everyone to the no sugar coating podcast this week I am talking about how feeling body shamed impacts your health navigating insecurities of feeling body shamed and ways to build body love This podcast today is, you know, really inspired by a lot of client conversations I've had and the shame that they've felt from different people and the shame that I've experienced and, and just that I see and witness in the world. And so I really wanted to theme the podcast today around that. So the show notes for today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 189. A friendly reminder to subscribe to the No Sugar Coating podcast on all podcast apps. You can click the link in the show notes as well. You can listen to all episodes at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast. And so cool that I have over 77 countries listening to the podcast. So hello, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Is the scale dictating your happiness? Are you afraid of being judged? based off your image and your body? Does this make you want to hide, especially now that summer's coming? I know this all used to have a huge impact on me. I wouldn't wear certain clothes and I'd be hiding at home on hot days for fear I'd have to wear something more revealing and be judged. I also didn't want to have to go and buy new clothes because I just had felt so defeated having to go up multiple sizes because I had hoped I would fit into my smaller clothes. And then I would start thinking to myself, well, I guess next summer I'll get to enjoy myself. Next summer I'll, you know, go on that date. Next summer I'll go on that trip. Um, And I'd say, you know, I'll just write this one off. And I wrote off a lot of summers because I wasn't a certain weight and I didn't look a certain way. And I denied myself of love and fun and adventures and happiness and full freedom and enjoyment of life because I was so attached to a number on a scale. And I can't get that time back. And I don't want you to regret not being able to get the time back either. And it was truly, you know, these kinds of experiences that really helped me to transform and build confidence and acceptance with the current body that I lived in. And I finally felt peace and I felt safe. And I came to know that regardless of my weight, I could choose to enjoy life fully now. And I could choose to feel and look beautiful at any number because that number no longer mattered. And feeling healthy and happy truly mattered. And when I took this, the power back from the scale and I actually smashed my scale, um, I never looked back and it just felt so good to beat the crap out of that thing. And I encourage you to do the same and you can do the same by learning how to feel comfortable and safe in your body. As when you do that, you realize life is happening now and you want to enjoy your summer to the fullest now and, and look forward to the plans you're making and the people you're going to be spending time with. You no longer need to let a number on a scale or a clothing size interfere with your vacation your road trip, your patio adventure, or whatever else you have planned. You truly are enough now. And I'd love to support you to create feeling yourself, feeling self-love, feeling body confidence, feeling happy and excited for summer. So make sure you email me at info at with the subject line summer coaching sale to save big on six month and your coaching programs for the next few weeks. Again, that's info at with the subject line summer coaching sale. We'll book a 30 minute body freedom call. I'll connect with you no matter where you are as I do everything online. 
We'll talk about your health goals and struggles, where you're seeking support, and I will talk to you about how I work with my clients and we'll see if it's a good fit for you. So I do look forward to connecting with you. And if you're wondering if you're struggling with emotional eating, um, which is largely tied to body image struggles, make sure you take my emotional eating quiz and also look through the emotional eating video series. Both the links of those are in the show notes um, as well. You can go to amberproof.ca and check them both out. New websites coming together. Can't wait to share it with you. It will be soon. Um, and so I'm just kind of putting the last finishing touches on some things and, and film some new videos. So I can't wait to share that with you. Last but not least, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Amber Romaniuk. That's R-O-M-A-N-I-U-K. As this is where I share a lot of my energy with health tips, emotional eating, inspiration, recipes, self-love, Instagram stories, lives, and more. Um, so make sure that you're following me there. And thank you for the reviews, the five-star ratings, the positive feedback, the emails, all of you who have reached out from the podcast who have become clients. Thank you for your courage, your vulnerability, your praise, and your support. It's because of all of you that I continue to share from my soul and my heart uh, this podcast for all of you. So if you'd like to leave a review to support the podcast, that is a great way to support the show. Um, so you can do so on your phone or computer by going to podcasts, searching for the No Sugar Coating Podcast. Even if you're subscribed to me, you'll need to find the show in this way. And once you are on my main page, you can click on reviews, write a re review in purple. Give me five stars if you like, or write a little something. You can also go to amberproof.ca forward slash review, and it will take you to the page where you can follow the steps that I have just shared. If you have questions, you can email me at info at amberproof.ca. I please ask that they are no more than 150 words in length as health histories need more support and private coaching may be a better fit. And if you're struggling with food addiction, emotional eating, you're finding a specific eating style isn't working for you, you have digestive issues, inflammation, or perhaps you suspect your hormones are off and you can't seem to lose your weight and keep it off. Your self-care continues to be a struggle and you are last on your priority list while you're in the right place as these are the habits and the mindsets and the you know, symptoms and different things that I will continue to talk about um, helping you to get onto a different path. Amber Approved offers private coaching for hormonal imbalances, weight loss and digestive issues, emotional eating, and more. Contact Amber at amberapproved.ca to book your 30-minute complimentary consultation today. So this first topic, like I said, this is a big topic today. Um, and I am really excited to share this and get really vulnerable with you today. And like I said, this podcast is truly dedicated to anyone who has ever felt weight shamed, fat shamed, skinny shamed, shame from, you know, for your body in some way, for the way that you look, um, for who you are. No one should be shamed for their appearance or who they are because we don't know what that person may be going through. So today's podcast is all about how to navigate body and weight shaming, whether you have shamed someone else or been shamed or both. So the first topic today, how feeling body shame impacts your health. So have you ever felt shamed or judged by your body, your weight, or your appearance? Have people ever made comments, called you names, said things that upset you or have impacted your life in some way, whether small or big. Maybe those words are still impacting you today and maybe your experience happened a long time ago. Shame and judgment from others can feel so draining. It can hurt really deeply and it can make you feel very insecure, sad, angry, frustrated, or like you just want to hide because you do feel deeply hurt and you take it personally. Trust me when I know, when I say that I've been body shamed, I was, you know, judged and body shamed when I was five and I was waiting for the best. And some of you have heard this story, but I'm going to tell it again anyway, because I think it's just so fitting for today's theme. And so you can you relate to this to your own experience, whatever has been. But I was waiting for the bus. I was five. I had little butterflies in my stomach. I was like wondering, who am I going to sit with? What friends am I going to make? This is just such a new experience for me. I was like all my big brown eyes and my little mushroom cut. And I was just so pumped. And as the bus pulled up, my heart was kind of like pounding because I was a little bit nervous. So many eyes were on me, right? Everyone watches you when you get on the bus. But the older me and boys stood out because they began to taunt me and laugh. And they said, look at her. She's fat. She's ugly. I was five. My world and my heart crumbled. 
I was just thinking who could be so mean to someone they didn't even know. They didn't even know me yet. They were making these assumptions about me. And from that moment on, well into my twenties, I became very shy and self-conscious and insecure. I really feared what they had said was true, that I was the fat, ugly girl who didn't belong. I feared I was unlovable by the opposite sex and that the only way to get a boy to like me was if I was skinny and bear with me if I get emotional today because I just think this is so vulnerable, this topic. I think we all have defining moments and yours may be slightly different or very different, but they can shape our world, our self-confidence, the way we think, the way we take care of ourselves, and the felt need for self-protection. For many women and men, that self-protection shows up as extra body weight. And until you do the inner work to feel safe, your body often will subconsciously hold onto the weight. And that's for a lot of people where they find that they go on a diet and lose the weight, but then it just so easily comes back on. It's often because you're not, you have not dealt with a deeper emotional subconscious level of hurt or emotions or past memories that is largely tied into, you know, the way that you were treated. And not only did I have that experience, I got compared at a young age, probably around 10 or 11. My parents and I went on vacation to BC um, where my friend and her grandparents um, had a place and we were sitting on a double tube, like getting ready to go out tubing on the water. And I just so vividly remember my friend's grandmother comparing me to her and saying, wow, even though you guys are the same age, like, wow, Amber's quite a bit bigger. And it felt terrible to have like people that I looked up to and adults saying these things to me. I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to be confident. I didn't know how to love myself. And again, because I had heard somebody else say it that I really actually liked, I thought, well, okay, it must be true. And what happened though, is that from a young age, I was very insecure. I didn't know any better. I built a relationship with food that was not healthy. I didn't know any better. When you don't know what you don't know, you can't do anything about it. I grew up with a mother who largely struggled with her body image and still does to this day. And she was very overweight from a young age. And prior to being born, my mom in her late 20s started to have tingling and numbness and different symptoms. And in her early 30s, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I really believe that this diagnosis really scared her as it would anybody. And I have so much love and compassion for anyone who's been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or any kind of illness. But I, I can imagine how scared she was, how like shocked or surprised she probably was. And I think that for her, that fear, you know, that she started to eat to numb the pain of the fear of, you know, what was happening to her body and that, you know, knowing that she was just going to slowly lose control of her body. I think that, you know, she really started to put on the protection um, because from the youngest age, I just remember my mother always being quite overweight. And when I looked at pictures of her, you know, in her teens and 20s, she was really thin. So I was quite surprised. But I think that diagnosis just really th um, put her over the edge. And she started to eat and, and, you know, I'd often hear her say from a very young age how much she hated herself. And she would cry and she would shame herself and she would put herself down. And so obviously, and I love my mother dearly because she didn't know what she didn't know, but she was not a, a good role model for me to learn how to love myself and build self-confidence as she was very insecure. And so she would also, I noticed she would comment on other women's weight, especially if they had gained weight, almost like she was happy that other people were gaining weight too, not just herself. It was a very interesting dynamic. So it's just observing these things from the past and sharing them with you because I know we've all had our own experiences and we've all had our own parent experiences, but it's like food became my friend um, and I was shy and timid because I didn't really trust others. And with my parent dynamic, especially with my mom and the way she was with her body image and with food, it was very easy to take on that, you know, food addiction and, and that role of, you know, feeling insecure. And that really, you know, that really did create a full-blown food addiction for me, as well as a diet addiction, because I was so addicted to dieting in my early 20s. And even through my teens, I think the first diet I went on, I was like 10 and I was, you know, really restricting my food because I had such a deep desire to be thin because I really did assume that if I was thin, I wouldn't be hurt and that I would be praised and that I would be loved. And I just so badly wanted to be loved. And this deeply impacted my health. As you've, as you've heard me talk about on this podcast of the last 
three years since I've been recording it. This has, you know, deeply impacted my health and I'm a lot better now, but the level of destruction that I put on my body over those years through binging and overeating and stuffing my emotions down and starving myself and over exercising and trying so many eating cells and exhausting myself emotionally and physically all the mean things I used to say to myself, like I remember in my early 20s, like crying and being so upset and overwhelmed and like saying to myself that like I hated myself and I wasn't happy with my body. I remember saying those kinds of things and it still makes me tear up because it just had such a big impact on all areas of my life. And I am still healing emotionally and spiritually from my food addiction. And right now I'm delving into the layer of all the childhood memories and all the childhood feelings of abandonment and negative emotions that um, I'm still actually hanging on to in my body that I've been unraveling now that I'm in this deeper part of my journey. I wouldn't have been able to identify those things right away because there's different layers to go through first, but I didn't even realize that I was hanging on to these things. And now that I'm aware, I'm starting to work through and release those emotions. And I think it's so important that we take the time to heal the deeper layers of our emotional past. Otherwise we hang on to it. We bring it with us and it does have a negative impact on your health. It does have a negative impact on your emotions. And just know though, it is important to go through the layers as they're meant to come up. Um, as I've mentioned, there's no way I could have handled dealing with this part. Even a couple of years ago, the level of shifting and growth and transformation that's happened for me, I'm so grateful for, but I also know how important and valuable it is for every aspect of my life, my health, my coaching, my business, my personal relationships to continue to grow and support and love myself. So now it's a process to work through any emotional trauma for that ma matter. And especially if you have been shamed, but I just wanted to share a bit of that because it just gives you a bit of insight into my childhood and just a little snippet of some of what I dealt with. I could go deeper into that, but I, I'm, I'm not sure that I need to. Being body shamed and insecure and not knowing how to handle it, it really cost me my weight gain and weight loss of over a thousand pounds. And yes, over a thousand pounds in five years, it cost me $50,000 on binge food. It's cost me five years to balance my hormones and digestion. It's cost me with inflammation, fatty liver, detoxification issues, moodiness, uh, you know, in the past, attracting unhealthy relationships, being broke in the past, being unhappy, being unwell and feeling so out of control with my life and body and not knowing how to cope with stress or my emotions in a healthy way. Choosing to work through this, however, has given me more than I could have imagined. So whilst it was really crappy and it was really painful to go through, we also go through this healing and this light and the, these breakthroughs by choosing to go through it. It's given me my business. It's helped me support hundreds of my clients to overcome emotional eating. It's given me this podcast and a space to share my voice and my authenticity. It's provided me with abundance. It's, it's brought me and attracted me my beautiful, loving boyfriend who truly is my soulmate. It's brought me understanding and compassionate friends and colleagues and help me build my self-love and my confidence and given me my health back. So whilst at the time it was awful, it was the most fulfilling journey that I could have ever gone on. And I know that my clients always say that as well. Freedom is priceless and we all deserve to have it. The No Sugar Coating Podcast is proud to partner with High Vibe Health. High Vibe Health is Alberta's only certified organic bone broth company and creator of Choco Broth, a chocolate bone broth drink that actually tastes like hot chocolate warm or chocolate milk chilled and is gluten-free, dairy-free and refined sugar-free, bone broth full and paleo friendly. Check out High Vibe Health online at www.highvibehealth.ca to shop their organic bone broths, bone broth soups, broth pops and Choco Broth. Feel free to also visit them at their broth shop in Midnapore, Calgary to take advantage of special offerings like gluten-free bone broth cookies. Delicious. Love them so much. You definitely have to check them out. Again, that's highvibehealth.ca. And that brings me to my second point of navigating insecurities of feeling body shamed. So whether it's that you've been fat shamed, skinny shamed, you're too tall, short, curvy, whatever it is. Being judged that you have gained weight, especially, I'm going to start with that first. Um, this is huge. You have no idea how many of my clients have come to me and been judged by their weight. 
that they've gained weight and that they need to lose weight. And there's been a lot of pressure put on them that they need to lose weight. And the assumption is, well, they must be lazy and just sit on the couch and eat Twinkies all day. And that's why they're gaining weight. So there's that whole aspect of gaining weight. And I'm going to talk more about, you know, some of the judgment and where this is coming from shortly. But now I want to go to the other side, being judged because you are thin. People assuming you must starve yourself, you must diet, you must be anorexic um, because no one can be thin without dieting or starving themselves, which is not true. There are people who are naturally very thin, very petite, very small, and they eat whatever they want or they eat very healthy or they truly take really good care of their bodies and and that is naturally their frame. Um, And I I follow an influencer um, on social media and she is very naturally thin. And so is her mother and her sisters. And you know, that makeup is definitely, um, in the family. That's not everything, but she also takes good care of herself. Yet I see her get shamed all the time and get bullied and put down for her small frame. And she's blogged about it. And I, I read that blog. Um, and she talked about her upbringing and how much she got bullied and some of the awful things, especially, you know, boys and men used to say to her about how thin she was and that she had no breasts and how it impacted her confidence as she was growing up. And she went through her own healing and now she's very confident. She's very successful and she's also very humble. Um, and she stands up for herself and she talks about the shame and she doesn't tolerate it. But I do think one of the biggest breakdowns of social media is how fast one person can judge another thinking how nice it must be to be thin, you know, shame on you. You must be be lazy because you're fat. Oh, well, look at you. You're rich. Like must be nice to have money, right? Like there's so much judgment. And it's like, what if you could embrace the other person and also embrace yourself for who you are and who they are instead of judging them? And how much energy would you save if you didn't judge other people? I want to talk about where I believe, um, this is my opinion, but where I believe the shaming comes from, because I believe that, you know, when you shame somebody else, that the shame comes from a deep place of your own hurt little child inside of yourself that feels insecure, unhappy, scared, hurt, whatever that is. And let's remember the ego, which is the self-sabotaging mindset that I've talked about before that fuels the food addiction, that fuels the negative self-talk. The ego mindset thrives off of drama. It thrives off of judgment and shame. So a lot of people let their ego control their lives and their mindsets and therefore the ego takes over and they judge people and they shame people and words of negativity and hate come out of their mouths daily on social media and emails or worse directly to people's faces. And the ego is so self-destructive, but if we have our self-love and confidence, no words that anyone else says to you can crush you. You can choose to let it go and actually have a lot of loving compassion for the person who shamed you because you can know that clearly they have their own wounded, hurt child and insecurities of not feeling good enough about themselves. And it's just that unfortunately for them, they don't want to do their own inner work and take responsibility so that they stop taking it out on others, right? They're playing small, but they don't even potentially realize it. So I just encourage you to be the bigger person and don't give your energy away to them. Walk away, block them on social media, stop spending time with them. Don't even respond. And the odd negative comment I get, whether it's an email or a comment on social media, I just delete it right away. I don't even spend any time fretting over it. My energy is far too precious to waste on somebody who is insecure and, you know, has to waste their own time and energy crapping on others because they're not willing to take responsibility. Don't believe their words. They aren't who you are and they don't know who you are. And each one of you truly is whole, is beautiful inside and out, is worthy, is full of love and potential. And nothing anyone else says about you is true unless you believe it and you take it in and you create an identity around that. And even if you've done that, because I did that when I got called fat and ugly, I undid that. I did the deeper work to undo that and release it. And you can as well. So if you are being shamed, if you are being bullied, if you are being put down, regardless of who is doing it to you, there is an opportunity for you to know that these are their words and their hurts and they are projecting it on you because they don't know how to deal with it themselves. Most likely they have a lot of their own anger and sadness and hurt and frustration pent up. And they again, thrive their ego thrives off of the drama and off of being negative toward other people. So I want you to know that it's not your truth. It's not who you really are. 
And the more that you can start lovingly reminding yourself, regardless of who it was, even if it was your parents, it's not your stuff. How many of my clients, their parents have told them they're fat, they're ugly, they're not good enough, they need to try harder. And this fuels perfectionist mindsets, this fuels people pleasing, and then they're exhausting themselves and it's costing them their health and well being and their happiness to try to prove to whomever it was that told them these things that they are good enough, but it doesn't ever fill the void because nothing outside of you will ever fill the void. It's about going inside and doing the inner work, the emotional work. I know it's more vulnerable. I know it's scary. I know it's uncomfortable, but as you work through it, you gain freedom. And that is one of the most valuable, empowering things that you can give yourself is freedom, self-expression, and the opportunity to gain optimal health because then you truly get your life back and then you get to really live a fulfilling life. If you are the one shaming others, and for those who are being shamed, please listen to this as well, because I am, I'm here to be a voice for both sides. And I mean this with love, but I also must say it because I've just heard it like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and I've seen it all over in social media. And it's, I think, important for me to be a loving voice and stand up. So if you are shaming others, okay, who's shaming everyday regular people, influencers, celebrities, then we look at the health and wellness. Okay. You have no idea how many of my clients have gone to see their doctor or their personal trainer or other healthcare practitioner. And if they haven't lost weight or they've gained some weight, the assumption is you're fat and lazy. Okay. That is is so demeaning to your patient, to your client. That is very much an inner reflection, I feel, of where you are at with your own journey of self-love. And I think there's probably some deeper work for you to do there so that you stop assuming that your client or patient is fat because you never know how you may trigger them. The words that you say to them may trigger emotional eating. It may trigger severe restriction, dieting, binging, eating disorders, negative self-talk may trigger more health issues. And it, in fact, may make them feel really uncomfortable, or really unsafe coming to see you. And then they dread coming to see you, even though you're supposed to be supporting their health and well-being. And it may become one of the reasons why their body is hanging on to weight or protection because they don't feel safe. They really trusted in you and valued you regardless of your profession. When you do that to somebody else who is vulnerable with their body and insecure, you have no idea how deeply you may be negatively impacting them and how that then may be impacting your health. And I'm not saying it's your fault, but I'm saying you are a contributor to their vicious cycle that they are so desperately trying to get out of. So take off the label, whether you're a doctor or a naturopath or a personal trainer or a psychologist or you're a school teacher or you're a mom or a dad, I ask you, if you were in the person's shoes that you are shaming and you are judging and you are just assuming that they're, oh, must be nice to have good metabolism and be thinner. Oh, you're, you must be lazy and just eat chips all day. If you were in that person's shoes and you were felt, feeling as vulnerable and insecure as they were, would you want to hear those words? Would you want someone to assume that you're fat and lazy and that's why you can't lose weight? Would you want someone to assume, oh yeah, it must be nice to just be thin or you must starve yourself? How would it make you feel to hear those words? Probably wouldn't make you feel very good, right? Or maybe you're in their shoes because I've worked with doctors. I've worked with all these healthcare professionals. I've worked with so many different professionals and different women and men in many walks of life where they are the one who's support supporting someone else in their health journey and they're insecure and they're struggling with their weight or they're struggling with their relationship with food or their body image. And it doesn't feel good when the people that are supposed to be helping and supporting you are shaming you and you're feeling judged and not feeling safe. Very important. It's time to stop shaming others. It's time for people with egos in their hierarchy to get off their high horse and realize we're all equal and we're all human beings on this earth. And we need to learn how to love and appreciate one another because we're all here to serve a purpose and we don't need any more negativity or hate. So I would really encourage you to check in with yourself before you go to um, serve your clients today or you go to pick up your child that you may have been being really hard on and shift the way that you're speaking to them and serving them. I personally have a newfound understanding for all shapes and sizes of bodies because when I was in my teens and when I was younger, I too used to judge and assume that I was a bit bigger because I wasn't as active and I didn't eat well. And so I just thought that, you know, I would follow in my mom's footsteps and end up big like her. And I assumed most other people were bigger because they were lazy and didn't eat well. I didn't realize 
the deep-seated hurt and trauma and crappy memories and experiences that most people carry throughout their lives and that it turns into a weight or protection because they don't feel safe and they're storing it all in their body. They're not processing or working through or releasing those memories that are just so not fun to think about. And now, and obviously over the past, you know, 10 years of my healing journey, when I see people and I just go out into the world, I'm internally complimenting everyone I see. And of course, if I'm, you know, interacting with someone, I'll compliment them. And, you know, I'll just see people and go, I'm curious. I wonder their story. I wonder what's going on for them. I wonder, you know, what is, is going on with, with their mindset and their experiences. And that curiosity is so much lighter and it feels so good to be complimenting these people and sending them love and compassion versus judging and being negative. Because not only does that have a negative impact on me and my body, but it doesn't feel good for the other person. I never actually would used to say anything to someone, but I would think it. And I think it's so important for us to work on our mindset and catch the judgment and shift to a more empowering, positive thought process for ourselves and others. And that also goes for comparing yourself to others as well. So I think it's so important that we stop judging, we stop shaming, regardless of someone's shape, size, weight. It's not just that someone needs to, you know, go on a diet and lose weight. Oh, cause you want to, you know, lower your risk of other health issues. Yes, that's important, but it's not that simple. People have hormone imbalances. They have digestive imbalances. There's inflammation. There's emotional eating. There's all the negative memories from the past that make people want to hang on to protection. People have overbooked schedules. People have, you know, poor detoxification and and their livers and their bowels aren't detoxifying properly. Um, People have all sorts of physical, emotional, mental imbalances going on. And if you're spiritual, I really believe there's that aspect as well that we need to deal with. And it takes time to deal with those things to help your body feel safe enough to let go of protection if it is that you're struggling with excess weight and that you can't seem to get it off. So if you ever go to someone and they make you feel just absolutely like crap, you know, going, well, you just need to lose weight. I would encourage you get a different healthcare practitioner, you know, go and see someone who makes you feel safe and comfortable because I would never judge one of my clients and I would never make any false assumptions and I would never pressure them that they need to lose weight. I'm actually helping them to work through the shame that they're feeling from other people and to let them know this journey is at your pace and by honoring yourself on your pace, you will receive the healing and the balancing and the freedom that you seek because you take the pressure off. We stop focusing on the weight and we start focusing on you building body freedom, which is all the aspects of your physical and emotional health. That is so important that you feel safe and you feel like you can share. So just know that if you don't feel safe, I would encourage you to go and see other people, um, professionals that can help you to feel safe. If it's your personal relationships, have empowering conversations with your spouse, your friend, your family member, because it is so important that you feel safe. The No Sugar Coating Podcast is proud to partner with Hippie Snacks. Hippie Snacks is committed to high quality non-GMO ingredients, all sourced from sustainable farmers and processors. Their snacks are minimally processed in British Columbia with nutrient dense ingredients you can pronounce. The company celebrates natural foods and only uses pure, simple, whole foods ingredients. One of my favorites that Hippie Snacks has just launched are their new cauliflower crisps and avocado crisps. They are baked, crispy, and delicious, and I absolutely love them. So make sure you check them out at hippiesnacks.com to see their full lineup of snacks. And that brings me to my last point, which is talking about ways to build body love. It is a process. No quick fix will give you self-love and acceptance. No pill, no diet, no workout plan, no clothing size, no matter how small and fit you get or how toned you are, none of that will give you self-love. What will give you self-love is to start to identify if you feel insecure within your body, if you don't love yourself, if you're struggling with emotional eating, if you often compare yourself to others or you feel very hurt about what people have said to you in the past, it's actually just admitting that you're still hanging on to this stuff or that you're struggling with this stuff. And that it's important to start 
working through it. And it's important to carve out time in your schedule to make yourself a priority to start working through it. So that's why I always talk about starting to unbook time in your schedule so that you can start to honor your body. That's also where this is about you learning how to stand up for yourself and set healthy boundaries. So if people are saying things to you that are not very kind, that you can, you know, lovingly request that they, that you you are not going to allow them to say things like that anymore or that you start to spend less time with people who do things like that. It's also to say that, again, if you find your health team or your support team, whoever they are, are making you feel shamed for your body and your weight, either way, to find different people who are going to make you feel safe and supported so that you can actually go on a safe and journey feeling supported versus feeling judged and feeling shamed. It's also to unfollow people on social media, delete, block people who make negative comments, delete emails, don't even bother responding to them. You have nothing to explain. It is about standing in your power and claiming your truth and knowing these words that others are saying to me are not my truth. This is not who I am. And even if you don't fully believe it for yourself, it is about starting to affirm, I am beautiful. I am powerful. I am worthy. I am good enough now. And I'm going to work to really build that and really, so I can feel it to the depths of my soul, in my heart, that I am worthy and I do love myself and I respect myself. And therefore, because I love and respect myself, I'm really going to honor my body and I'm going to, you know, cut out the weeds that don't support my growth in a healthy way. I think that's so important and it's important to take small steps. I also think it's important to get support. I think for a lot of this deeper work, it is imperative to get support so that you can talk about it. You can get tools and strategies. You can get the level of support that you require for your journey. You can also address things like emotional eating, learn how to understand your ego, your self-sabotaging mindset, and how to really um, gain your power back from that. You can also learn how to build confidence how to, you know, take and let go of shame that others have put on you. I think it's so important to get help for all those things and support with your physical state of health. So if you are struggling with, you know, embarrassing digestive issues and you suspect your hormones are out of balance and you have inflammation and food sensitivities and you have debilitating sugar cravings and you're not sleeping well and all of these things just pile up and that impacts your body confidence as well. So it's important to work on both pieces. And I think it's important to, to do a bit of both as, as you go along on your journey, because the better you feel and the more awareness you build with your body, the more in tune you are, the, the more you know what you need and you can give yourself what you need, whether it's emotional or physical. And you want to keep building on that. You want to keep giving to yourself because it's working and it's helping you to transform. And my confident or my clients rather (laughs) have built a lot of confidence and they have, it's changed their lives. They've gone for their dream jobs. They've fallen in love in beautiful relationships. They've gotten out of really unhealthy relationships. They've moved. They've said no when they used to be people pleasers. They've started to ask for help and build balance and stand up for themselves Such empowering things start to happen when we have the support and guidance and someone to be a champion for our health and and stand for our greatest good. And so just know for all of you, whether you just listen to this podcast or you are a client or you do decide you want to reach out for help, I stand here to truly be a champion for your health, your self-love, your self-worth, and to really end the body shaming and the fat shaming and the skinny shaming. There is no space for it. It is not supportive of anyone's greatest good. And I think if more people really owned and took responsibility for their own emotional baggage, then they wouldn't have to criticize others, right? So I think there's a lot of opportunity to get support. There's opportunity to just start to pick away at it. Journal, start to write about your feelings. If someone really upset you um, and said something that really, you know, made you really feel hurt, write a letter and burn it. You don't have to give it to them unless you really want to, but you can write about it and just put all your feelings down on paper and then burn it. Or I've had people, I went to this workshop once and of course it was, there's like safety glasses and like you put your bottle in a Rubbermaid container with the lid on and then you smashed it. But we all took like wine bottles and wrote all these things we wanted to release. And then of course put the safety glasses on and put it in the thing. And so of course, like at your own discretion, but that's where I find like putting it on a piece of paper, you could throw it in in the sink and burn it, or you could Uh, And then, of course, put some water on it. Or if you're having a bonfire, go and throw all that stuff out there and, and let it go. 
Because one thing I think we need to start doing is letting go of the past because hanging on to it has a negative impact on your health. We've got to start letting go. The past is the past. You can't change it. You can't control it. But what you can change is this moment and the thoughts you choose to think, the way you take care of yourself and the way that you move forward on your own unique journey. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. The show notes for today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 189. As I always say, there's no better time than the present to take action on your health. So make sure you take action now. Have a beautiful day, a great week. Don't forget to take advantage of the coaching sale if it's resonating with you. And truly, you are all amazing. You are all worthy. You all have self-love within you and you all are so full of potential. It's just a matter of you going on your journey or continuing on on your journey to find it for yourself. And sometimes getting help will help us with that. And if you choose to do it on your own, that's great too. But you all have it within you just like I had it within me. It's just a matter of taking the time to work through the layers to find it and feel it and create it to be who you are, which everyone can do. So enjoy your day. Have a beautiful week. Happy official summer. And I look forward to sharing a whole new podcast episode with all of you lovely people next Sunday. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, review, and rate this podcast and share it with your friends. You can find me at amberapproved.ca and follow me on Instagram and YouTube at Amber Romaniak. Join me next Sunday for another brand new episode and another step toward body freedom.